The brand new TFT Set 11 Inkborn Fables is just around the corner. In today's video, we'll delve into each 5 cost units' abilities, best in slot items, adaptability to comps, and their overall impact at 2 star and 3 star levels. Additionally, we'll present a tier list based on recent PBE data. While the meta may evolve post release, this analysis will equip you for the early days of Set 11. So, Grab your notepads, and let's get started! The first unit that we are going to start off with is Azir, one of the returning champions from the previous set. Azir is characterized by his Dryad and Invoker trait. Azir's ability unleashes a powerful beam, dealing magic damage to enemies, and spawning a guardian upon hitting the first enemy. He synergizes well with comps like Dryads and Invokers. His core items include Blue Buff or Spear of Shojin for mana generation, Rabadon's Death Cap for increased ability power, Static Shiv for frequent attacks, and Giant Slayer for dealing with tanky units. Acquiring him as a 2-star unit significantly boosts survivability and can potentially take down frontlines with ease. While 3-star Azir is on a whole new level, transforming him into an unstoppable emperor. In the one versus all battle, it's quite easy for Azir to fry all the enemies. Next up on the list, we have another returning champion, Aurelia. Aurelia has the trait combination of Duelist and Story Weaver. Her ability sends blades between enemies, dealing physical damage and applying sunder. She fits well into comps centered around Duelists and Story Weavers. Best in slot items for her include Gunnance's Rageblade for increasing attack speed, Infinity Edge for critical strike chance, and Deathblade for increased AD. Acquiring her as a 2-star unit notably increases survivability, dealing attacks right into the backline while three star turns her into a high mobility assassin still in one versus all battle aurelia is not preferred moving on to our next champion set who belongs to the faded umbral and warden traits sets passive ability triggers at the start of combat causing him to squat adjacent units in the same row granting him bonus AD and health. His active ability allows him to slam the current target forward, stunning them and dealing physical damage. He synergizes well with Faded Comp as he gets Omnivamp as the Faded bonus. Also works well with Porcelain Ash Comp. Optimal items for set include AD-based items such as Bloodthirster, Titan's Resolve, Hand of Justice, and Infinity Edge. Acquiring him as a 2-star unit significantly provides a strong frontline, while reaching 3-star transforms him into an unstoppable force carrying the whole board into his arms. Set versus all would be a great treat to watch, unless it is up against another Max Wukong. That Wukong will be our next champion on the list. Wukong shares the Heavenly and Sage trait, with a special trait known as Great. His ability cycles through three actions, throwing, spinning and slamming his staff dealing significant damage to enemies. He synergizes well with Heavenly Comp, utilizing Omnivamp bonus from it. His combination with Sage Dragonlord Comp is also great. Recommended items for Wukong can be the same AD items along with the Edge of Night. Acquiring him as a 2-star unit extends his effectiveness in battles, while 3-star Wukong continuously deals significant damage. Wukong vs. All in a battle is still undefeatable, dealing plenty of damage with giant shots. Udur is the next warrior featured in this list. Udur originates from the Ink Shadow and Behemoth traits. Just like Wukong, he also has a special trait, Spirit Walker. Udur's abilities include Ram Slam and Tiger Strikes, dealing magic magic damage by slamming through enemies. He synergizes with every comps being a tanky frontline and also an aggressive attacker. Optimal items for him can be either tanky items or a minivamp providing items. Acquiring Udur as a 2-star unit can win crucial rounds. 3-star Udur becomes a versatile powerhouse, knocking down all other enemies one by one. One versus all scenarios are a piece of cake for Udur, making him immortal. Next up on the list is Lee Sandra, one of the most popular units among players in the PPE lobby. Lee's Sandra belongs to the Porcelain and Arcanist traits. Lysandra's abilities stun and deal magic damage by throwing teapots and turning them into a loot orb if they die. She synergizes well with comps focused on magic damage such as Arcanist. Adding her to any comp is worth it, as we get loots by her ability. Recommended items for Lee Sandra include Jeweled Gauntlet, Ionic Spark, Spear of Shojin or Blue Buff, 
Hand of Justice with Giant Slayer is also a good choice. Acquiring her as a 2-star unit significantly increases the damage dealt. Upon reaching 3-star, Lee Sandra gets the entire enemy team in a teapot and boils them. So, in a 1 versus all battle against Lee Sandra would be a good tea party for the opponent's units. The next champion on this list is Wei, an artist. Wei is a standout backline magic caster boasting the mythic and artist traits, with high base health and mana, making him formidable on the board. He excels in comps requiring a potent magic caster for consistent damage from afar and with the complete mythic comp it's a no-brainer to have him. His standout feature is granting a special bench slot providing a one-star copy of a unit placed on it after certain rounds. To optimize his potential, consider equipping him with a blue buff for mana regeneration, Rabadon's Deathcap for increased spell power, and Jeweled Gauntlet for critical spell damage. At two-star, his durability and damage output significantly increase, ensuring his competitiveness against other high-cost units. A three-star way becomes a force to be reckoned with, capable of decimating entire teams if left unchecked. In the one versus all battle, Wei wipes through the whole board with his ability. Last but not least, we got a couple of five costs left. Yes, they are couples, Zaya and Rockin. Zaya and Rockin both have Dragon Lord traits along with a special lover's trait. Additionally, Zaya has Trickshot synergy and Rockin has Altruist synergy. They both can be obtained based on their positions of either frontline or backline. Their abilities synergize as Zaya deals physical damage, while Rockin deals magic damage, resulting in powerful effects. Thus, it provides more flexibility based on available items. Rockin fits an altruist-based Dragon Lord comp, whereas Zaya is good in Ink Shadow Trick Shot comp. Recommended items for Zaya include Rageblade, Deathblade, and Infinity Edge, while Ionic Spark, Jeweled Gauntlet, and Crown Guard are optimal for Rockin. Acquiring them as two-star units significantly enhances their individual power and synergy. Upon reaching three-star status, they become become an unstoppable duo, continuously buffing and protecting each other while efficiently dealing with enemies. In a one versus all battle, Rockin is preferred over Zaya. Let's have a quick data analysis upon these five cost units. These stats were analyzed from Lolches, Tactics Tools, and Mobilitics along with personal experience of more than 100 games on set 11. Currently, the fan favorite and most picked five cost is set followed by Udur, Yukong, and Wei. And on the win rate stats, Wei tops the chart followed by Azir, Lee Sandra, Rockin, and Set. While they are ranked based on average positions, all of them assure a top four, with Azir in the top followed by Rockin, Lee Sandra, Set, and Wei. Based on the analysis and comparison, here's the tentative tier list for five cost champions in TFT Set 11. This is the tier system that we have utilized, where Azir and Set got into the S tier because of their pick rate and win rate. Aurelia is considered to be weak among these five costs, still a potential carry with proper synergies. This analysis might change in the future based on upcoming updates. Remember, the key to mastering TFT is understanding the strengths and synergies of your units. That brings us to the end of the video. For more informative contents subscribe to our channel Item Swap. Thank you.